Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining me. I'm Mike Drodis, Bible teacher and preacher. You've tuned into my YouTube channel, Solving the Prophetic Puzzle. There is an event that's going to happen in the near future. At least I think so. In the near future, this event is circled on God's calendar. It is the day in which God the Father looks to Jesus Christ, his son, and says, go and get your bride. Jesus then descends from heaven to the earth and is in the atmosphere above the earth. There will be a shout. There'll be the voice of an archangel. There'll be the trumpet of God. The dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who remain and who are alive on the earth at that time will be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. And then we shall be caught up to be with the Lord forever. And these are comforting words. I'm talking about the rapture, of course. And if you are waiting for the rapture, if you are looking forward to the rapture, then you are probably also a student of eschatology, a student of last days, a student who studies Bible prophecy. It goes hand in glove. Today, I want to talk to you about one individual who will be very prominent during the seven-year tribulation period. In fact, he starts off at the beginning and he goes all the way to the end. This person, of course, is the Antichrist. I don't want to get into a big discussion about him. I don't, I, don't, I don't look for the Antichrist. But I think it's something that we should study. So if you have a moment, just pray with me as we get into the lesson today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the opportunity to share the Word of God with people all over the world, to, to encourage people to look forward to the rapture, to encourage people to be aware of their surroundings and know that the time is short and that you are coming back soon. Holy Spirit, I ask you to help me teach this lesson to your people today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, the, the apostles realized that there was a spirit of Antichrist. In John chapter 2, the, the letter that John wrote, John chapter 2, verse 18, he told his church, Little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard, that the Antichrist is coming. Even now, many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. John was telling his church that the spirit of Antichrist was on the earth, and it was pushing, this spirit is pushing and pushing for one man to rise up at the right time to, to uh, plunge the world into a seven-year tribulation period. Paul talked to the Thessalonians about the same individual. He said, Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken by mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had already come. Paul was encouraging people, The day of Christ hasn't come yet. It's going to happen in the future. He said, let no one deceive you by any means. That day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. Paul is saying that in the last days, there, there will come a time, we call it the seven-year tribulation period. But Daniel calls it the 70th week or the last week allotted to the Jewish nation. You see, it's really all about the Jews. In, in these last days. And, and Paul was telling them that during these last days, the man of sin will be revealed. He mentions what he does. He'll go into the temple and he will be worshipped as one who sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. He will have the audacity once the Jewish temple is rebuilt, to go into the Holy of Holies, declare himself as God, he'll build an image of himself and cause all people to receive a mark on their hand or forehead in the temple of God. Now, the temple hasn't been built yet, but it could be built very soon. Everything's in place for all of this to be built. Everything is in place for the uh, seven-year tribulation to happen. Every piece is getting into place, and the man of sin is somewhere waiting in the wings right now. 
Now, I don't look for him. I don't look, I don't, I don't really care about him. I'm not impressed by the Antichrist. I look to Jesus Christ. But as we see the spirit of Antichrist, and as we see the, uh, uh, the Antichrist rising to power, when we see this, we'll know that the rapture is imminent at that point in time. Paul continues to talk about this man of sin, uh, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he's taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan. This guy has made an agreement with Satan that he will be his man for the hour. And Satan will prop him up with all power. It says, with all power, with signs and lying wonders. He will deceive the world and he will deceive the Jews. That being said, if the Jewish nation is waiting for their Messiah, if they're looking for their, their, their Savior, then I think that this guy is probably going to be somebody who represents himself as a Jewish individual. After all, they would, wouldn't accept somebody unless they were, were a Jewish individual. Other people have said the same thing. They said that possibly he could come from the line or from the tribe of Dan. Now you may be saying, well, what, what are you talking about there? Look at Genesis chapter 49. Genesis 49 Verses 16 through 18. Jacob is giving his last words to his sons. And when he gets to Dan, he says, Dan shall, be, shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent by the way, a viper by the path that bites the horse's heels so that its rider shall fall backwards. I've waited for your salvation, O Lord. Jacob has seen this in the future, that Dan will be a ruler of the people. But we know that Jesus came from the tribe of Judah. Interesting to note, both Judah and Dan are the only two individuals that the Bible uh, records that they are referred to as a lion's whelp. Deuteronomy 32.22 and Genesis 49.9 and 10 calls both these two individuals a lion's whelp. One church father or historian, Hipp Hippocletus, viewed this as a juxtaposition, as Judah being the true Christ, Jesus, and Dan, the man that comes from Dan, as being the false Christ or the Antichrist. Quite possibly, that could be true. These are speculations. We do know this that the Antichrist starts off the seven-year tribulation period. Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. Then he shall confirm a covenant with the many for one week, seven years. But in the middle of the week, he shall bring an end to the sacrifice and offerings. So we see that this false Christ, this Antichrist, begins a seven-year covenant between Israel and the many. During the middle of the week, this Antichrist, I believe really that there are two phases of Antichrist. There's the first three and a half years when this man is the Antichrist. He is a false messiah. He's a liar. He's, he's deceiving people with signs and wonders, lying signs and wonders. But in the middle of this, of this seven-year period, something happens to him. The Bible says that he goes into the temple. He declares himself to be God. He causes people to worship him. And Revelation then refers to him as the beast. The beast of Revelation. I believe that during the seven-year tribulation period, this, this man experiences, 
for lack of a better, he is born again, but he is born again to death. He becomes incarnate with Satan himself. And he is no longer simply a man. He is called the beast of Revelation. And he makes war on the holy people, war on the saints, and war against God and Jesus, and drives the world to the battle of Armageddon. Now we're not there yet, but we are on the cusp of all these things happening. We are moving through biblical prophecy, Day by day, year by year, we are drawing closer and closer to these events. And for some, they may be saying, well, this you're frightening me. This is scaring me. There is no reason to be scared if you are in Christ. If you are born again, as we see these things begin to happen, we can rest assured that soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. We are going to be raptured. We are going to experience the rapture. Before judgment falls upon the beast and his system, God will remove the the church from that. God will not pour out his wrath upon the church. And the trumpet judgments and the bowl judgments is the wrath of God. So keep looking up. Stay in faith. Keep studying the word of God. Keep walking in love. And as I like to say, Keep looking up. Jesus Christ is coming back soon. Hey, thanks. If you haven't liked or subscribed yet, please do so. Every week I do it. One or two videos about the end times, about the rapture, or about something dealing with prophecy or dreams. So until next time, as I say again, keep looking up. Jesus Christ is coming soon. God bless you.